and our last speaker, uh, Dr. Hafer Yunus. She's an American board certified obstetrician and gynecologist. She's a graduate of both the Mecca Institute of Islamic Studies in Jeddah, a graduate of Al-Hudda Quran Memorization School in Jeddah. She's the founder and chairwoman of Jannah Institute for Women, where she teaches classes and conducts seminars on the Quran and its relevance to our day-to-day -day living. She also offers retreats on key topics to inspire a connection to God. Um, well, the floor is all yours now, Dr. Yunus. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. Allahumma alimna ma yanfa'una wa anfa'na bima alamtana inaka sami'un mujibu dua. Allahumma ni a'udhu bika min ilmin la yanfa' wa qalbin la yakhsha'u nafsin la tashba' wa dua'in la yusma' wa rabbana la tuzqulubana ba'da idh hadaytana wa hab lana min ladunka rahma inaka anta al-wahhab rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa hlul 'uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli salam alaykum wa rahmatullah everyone i would love to see you all but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a reason for us for the last year actually in a few weeks becomes a year where we lived in this way where we became much more connected but distantly so alhamdulillah rabbil alamin it's a pleasure to be with you all it's beautiful to have this subject to be talked about and discussed about because it's real yeah and i am sure if there was time and i would have the ability or the opportunity and maybe in the questions and answers to ask every woman listening to me today i am sure she will have at least one if not two if not three stories personal about feeling this living this and allah knows how she managed it so um, misogyny or, or or discrimination or hatred or uh, looking down at women in general it is there it is absolutely there it is toward muslim women you probably gonna say it is more can everyone hear me yes, yes we can hear you can hear you now audio is fine so me as a muslim woman you as muslim woman en we have double if not a triple or four issues mm -hmm. that we are facing this is how i'm going to start saying look at everything that happens in your life as a blessing from allah كل, and i will say it in arabic for those of you who know everything comes from allah as khair كل ما ياتي من الله خير everything comes from allah as khair so when I am being discriminated against, you may find this is strange, but look to what I am going to share with you. Everything comes from Allah is khair is good. I am being discriminated. Have I been discriminated as a woman, as a Muslim woman living in the, in the States? The answer is absolutely. I lived in England before. Absolutely. As a Muslim woman, as a professional, as a physician. But where is the khair? Where is the goodness in this? This is what you, every Muslim woman listening to me, I want you to know this. This topic will not be changed. And we cannot fight it unless I, number one, acknowledge it. And number two, each one of us as an individual, fight it. Don't expect somebody else will do it for you. You do it. I do it. How do I do it? It's not fighting. You change the perception by you changed it. You change. I can share with you stories of what misperception the way I look gives people beyond, beyond. I'll just share one quick story with you so you can imagine. And this is, this is like 15 years ago. I, I was flying back from South Africa and just, just in the plane. We did not even take off yet. And they announced, is there a physician in this, um, on this plane? And I stood up and I was, subhanAllah, sitting at the end, at the back of the plane. And I came forward and another man came with me. And it took about 45 minutes. It was about uh, with, and talking with the pilot. Finally, we had to have the uh, passenger moved out because he was very sick. So I was coming back and I was wearing, of course, my Muslim attire. And, and when I travel, I usually wear abaya because it's very comfortable. And as I was coming back, this is 15 years ago, but I will never forget it till the day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take me back. And I was on, on a, an airline, of course, Western airline, without names, we are public here. 
And in the middle of the aisle, I was called, excuse me, excuse me. And I looked and he said, are you a doctor in front of everybody in the plane? And I said, yes. And he said, are you? And I said, yes, three times. I was about to joke because the third time said, oh yes. I was about to say, you want me to show you my license? What is that? Perception, wrong perception because of the way I look, definitely because I am a woman. If not, it's number one, because I am a woman. Number two, the way I look, it doesn't fit. So number one, my beautiful sisters, and if the brothers are hearing me, we have to accept it. This is one of the wisdoms of Allah that we don't have an explanation. But there has to be khair in it. There has to be good in it. And Islam is not this. This is what the whole topic is. Islam is not this. The, 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 neither the scripture, the Quran itself says this, nor Rasul says this, nor the teaching of Rasul As I was thinking, one verse came in my mind, and probably most of you may be familiar with it. It's the first verse in the surah called Surah Al-Mujadala. Al-Mujadala is basically argumentation. What is this first verse? A lot of people don't talk about this verse or refer to this verse. You know what is this verse about? This verse about? This is a woman and they even differ in her name. So you can imagine, it's not like somebody who's well known and public. Khawla, Khuwayla, Khawla bin Thalaba. If you read the, the commentary, they will give you like five, six names. What did this woman do? She came to Rasul He was with a Sayyida Aisha. And the Sayyida Aisha is narrating this. And she said, this woman came to Rasul complaining about her husband. And she said, Ya Rasulullah, the meaning, I'm explaining it to you. She said, Ya Rasulullah, he married me when I was young. I got pregnant and gave children. And now I am older. Now, quote unquote, even she described like I gain weight. And now he doesn't want me. And he told me, you are like my mother, meaning no marital relationship. What should I do? The messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the answer gave what Allah taught us up till now. And he, he told her, you are haram, Ali. You are not anymore man and, and, a, and a husband and a wife. She responded, I need you to feel this. This is a woman, not a scholar, right? Has a marital issue, came to the best creation of Allah, right? And he answered her, number one, and the answer is not what she want. Responded again, she said, Ya Rasulullah, I lived with him all these years, served him, gave children. Now I am older and quote unquote gain weight and now he doesn't want me? How? How often you hear this? He responded, You, this is what Allah taught him so far. There is no compromise. Third time, third time, Sayyidah Aisha saw that Rasul face changed. And she told her, Hold on. Because Sayyidah Aisha knows when the Quran, when the revelation being revealed to Rasul, she said to her, Don't speak anymore, wait. And then this verse was revealed to Allah, to Rasul Qad sami'a Allahu qawla allati tujadiluka fi zawjiha wa tashtaki ila Allah. Because at the, the third time, she said, I'm complaining to Allah. Basically, what we say these days is not fair. What did I do? And Allah responded, Quran, yutla to this day. You and I recited up till today. Allah have heard. Allah have heard the saying or the speech of the one, the woman, meaning the woman, she is arguing with you or discussing with you the matter of her husband. Allah hear what you are saying, meaning how you responded. Imagine this is a Rasul And then and Allah then send the hukum, the ruling, because of a woman, not a scholar. What does that teach me? 
as a Muslim woman, and this is to all my beautiful sisters, number one, and you, if you have ever heard me speaking or you will follow us, our programs on Jannah Institute, you know what is my first focus in life. Learn your deen, my beautiful sisters. Learn it well and learn it properly, not what you were taught by your family, by my mother or grandmother, may Allah bless them and give them Jannah to those. I'm talking about study, learn well. Learn not only your rights, but what's your obligations also toward Allah, toward the Rasul, toward your family. Look at this woman. She didn't know, but when she went, and when she went to Rasul, she was explaining. She wanted an answer, and Allah supported her. So misogyny, misogyny is there. It is there. And as you put it beautifully in your introduction about the, the conference, it's painful what comes from the inside, let alone from the in, outside. So basically, we women have two, two sides we have to take care of. Inside my house, and this is, of course, not general, but I'm saying we hear this and we see this, that inside my house, I'm being looked down, discriminated, and then I go out and I am the Muslim woman, I am discriminated against, looked down or even attacked. It is there. What should we do? Number one, as I said, learn this fact. Don't be surprised. Get ready. What does that mean? And all of you, we live in non-Muslim world. Get ready when you are in the supermarket, when you are in waiting room, of, a of the physician. When you are in public as a Muslim woman, get ready that you will be asked, maybe nicely, maybe not nicely, in a way, express or reflect this. You need to be ready how to respond. Don't be shy, but be nice and be polite and show the beauty of your deen. If you don't know the beauty of Islam, you cannot give it to people. One, two, when you are contacting or communicating with the other people, show them the other face, show them, show them by action that what they hear and what they read and what they see is not true. Smile, talk to people. When you see a child, comment on it. Be sweet and nice, that's my deen, that's my religion, excuse me. Thank you. I'm sorry. I didn't pay attention. Sometimes I see when you are walking in the street and you see another Muslim woman, say salam to her. Spread peace. Be proud of who you are. Shyness is beautiful. Modesty is beautiful. But that doesn't mean it's weakness. And I am hiding the beauty. But most of the women, I think one of the problems, if I am looking at it from the woman's side of it, uh, point of view is that we women don't see that. Don't see the beauty in my deen. I don't know what Islam gave me. I don't know why Islam told me do this and don't do that. I don't know the wisdom, the hikmah from some of the things that we look at it and say this is not fair. All these things we need to learn. We need to learn the number one weapon, if I'm going to use this word, that woman will need to fight this hatred is education. Is educate. You stand up as the woman when she stood up to Sayyidina Umar. Sayyidina Umar, if there was a prophet, Rasulullah said this. If there was to be a prophet after me, it would be Umar. And you know what, what a personality he had. When he was giving the khutbah, and gave the ruling that it has been, the, the, the dowry has basically the meaning of dowry became out of limit and I am going to put a limit to it. Of course, he had a reason. She stood up, woman, we don't even know her name, but we know she was a woman. She stood up and she said, you're going to make what Allah made it halal, you're going to make it haram. And she quoted the ayah from the Quran. Everyone let them spend according to what they have. 
You cannot put a limit. If someone is rich, let them give more. And I can do this, you can do this without education. We're scared. Scared of what? Scared of what? You as a woman, Muslim woman, attached and connected with Al-Qawi, the strong, who can hurt me? Who can humiliate me? And you're going to tell me, but it's happening. And I'm going to say, yes. But Al-Qawi, when the strong is with me, two things will happen. Wallah, la illahu. And I'm saying this again from experience. I'm not saying it. You don't read this, these things in the books, by the way. He will be with me in two ways. Either he will give me the patience and the calmness to completely ignore this, or he will give me the strength and the hujja, the absolute way of responding. So you need, unless I have the education, unless I know this, I cannot do that. I absolutely cannot do that. So the first step in fighting this disease that is becoming pandemic, I think it's number one come from the woman. And I'm not saying you're gonna become argumentative and you're gonna, be, that's not how it is. That's not how it is. It's just like when I am in my office and I am discussing a point with a patient. It's not argument, it's explaining. And if, third, if you did all this and still things doesn't change, that's where my connection with Allah. I am gonna say, Ya Allah, that's, that's personal connection that we are missing also. I'm gonna say, Ya Allah, I did what you taught me. I tried to be strong. You help me. Inna la nansuru rasulina. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in many places in the Quran, but this is specifically about the messengers. We will give victory to our messengers. Yes, we are not messengers, but we are fighting for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I want to end up because I know I have only 15 minutes. Nadia, tell me if I if I passed my time. You know what? I could listen to you. You've got such a soothing voice. So a couple more minutes is fine. Don't worry. Just don't, I don't think it's Islamically correct to go too late or to go over our time. But this is what I want to tell you. There's some audio. It's getting crackly. I don't know what's going on. The voice is getting back again? Crackly. <laughs> so, uh, don't worry, don't worry, it's fine. <laughs> Do this again because now it's... Oh, still now got a phone you now. Oh, now okay. Hello? Is that, is that good? Yeah, I can hear you. Maybe put your volume up a little bit. Yeah. Sorry, I'm going to put my volume up. <laughs> Maybe whatever. <laughs> my, my inner volume. So okay. I'm going to leave you, my beautiful sisters, with the three things. And this is, Allah is my witness. I did not prepare anything. I actually, in fact, just came from the hospital. Oh, wow. Thank you for taking the time anyway. No, I, yeah, exactly. I have like a patient who's in a, alhamdulillah, she's getting better, but it's a serious. So I had to go and see her. And I was so glad when it is one o'clock. I thought it was 12, my time. So alhamdulillah, I will leave you with the three things. Okay. Beautiful sisters. Number one, it's all from the Quran. Number one, you want dignity. You want to be strong. You want to live with izza, with again, with dignity, with honor. Get connected with Allah. Don't get connected with any human being. And Allah said it. Man kana yuridu al-izza, fa'inna al-izza lillahi jami'a. Whomsoever wants dignity, power, yeah. honor, al-izza to Allah. Connect with Allah. Learn about Allah. Learn about your deen. Learn about his book. And see what Allah will give you. It's not going to come right away. It will, But it will come. That's number one. Number two, this process... To change needs time. Yeah. I have to be patient. I and you, all of us have to be patient. Not lazy. Not, uh, don't give up, but be patient. Things needs time to change. And yeah. who's going to give me patient? As-sabur. Allah. Ya sabur, sabburni. That's how I always say. When things get really tough and tight, I was like, ya sabur, sabburni. Ya Allah, you are the patient. Give me patient. That's number two. Number three, which is also related to Allah, 
rely on Allah. He is the one who will change things, not you and me. He will change it. But how? By you serving him. So when I am here today talking to you, if my intention, Allah knows my intention. If my intention was to impress you or to get the likes or to get the followers, don't expect anything from Allah because that's not from Allah. I fight for this deen for Allah because it's his religion. I practice it because it's his religion. The last word I will leave you with, get connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala properly and see what Allah will give you. Jazakumullah khair. Please forgive me for all the technical issues.